Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're taking a look at the Neptune Sky. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now I've been asked about a bazillion times for my opinion, my thoughts for a review of the Neptune Sky. Now I don't actually own one. Um, a buddy just picked one up so he said I could use it for a bit of an unboxing, a bit of a review. So today we're gonna check it out. So a little bit of initial things. So the Neptune Sky, there is, it's a 200 watt LED fixture. I believe there's roughly 109 LEDs inside of it. So, Taking a look inside the box, we have the sky and a nice little bag. Now it's actually way lighter than I expected it to be. You can kind of see it is a nice dark gray color. It has that soft touch coating. Um, on the front, you got, you got the little orange Neptune logo. They do include a gray one if you like more of a stealthier setup. If you don't want the green tones, they kind of got options there. Um, on the top, we do have two large PC style fans and that's for cooling. And looking around the edges, we got the venting where it blows the air back downwards. Um, the diffuser plate is a little bit loose in there. I remember talking to Terrence on a live stream way back when, and I guess that was more just if you grab it and pick it up, then it's not gonna put stress on it. So that's why they left it play, just to prevent any cracks from that aspect of it. Now, looking at the instruction card, you can't miss it, because it's huge. Um, looking at it, so check the box contents. Um, so we got the sky, power supply, some different mounting options of what size tank to put it on. Um, download the app so you can do, the, if you don't already have an Apex, you're on a Fusion, there's a QR code to your Apple or Android store. Um, bottom left, if you have an Apex, go to the new interface. Without an Apex, it should show up in the app. Um, on the top, we also got our button mode. So if you just run a standalone um, color change, so you can hold it down, it'll change, go from blue to purple, and that will change through different color modes. And if you want to change the intensity, hold it down when it's purple and it should change to green. And from there, you can change your intensity. Um, to accept the changes, hold it down again and it'll go back to blue. The spread looks pretty darn good if I put it lengthwise. So lengthwise, I'd probably want to use three on a six foot tank just to kind of give you a bit of an idea of it. Or yeah, probably about three would do the job. Four if you were like hardcore with acros, so depending. But the default profile right out of the box, there's pretty nice color rendition. I'm getting some nice pop out of most of the corals. Okay, so here we have it on all blues. Got some nice color pop everywhere. Uh, looks like some pretty decent spread as I'm seeing from my side all the way to a little bit past the Ghanis. We click through it, it gets a little bit brighter. Another shade of brightness. Brighter, brighter, brighter. And finally a bit of a warmer one. I'm gonna assume this is probably the photo mode because this would probably show up very well on camera. That's kind of what you can do with it just straight out of the box if you're just using the manual settings with the button. And if you want more control, you're either gonna have to set up with Bluetooth or for kind of standalone mode, if you have an Apex, you can probably likely just plug it into the Aquabus port and set it up that way. Now let's get this added to the app and get it checked out. Now, two things to consider. You can either add it Bluetooth, which is the method for if you don't have an Apex or you're setting up a new one. But if you have an Apex, it's gonna expect you're plugging in to the Aquabus, which is the USB cable that comes with it. And that would normally hook up to your Apex. So on this one, we're gonna start out by just adding it to a brand new tank so it doesn't have an Apex, that way we can connect over Bluetooth. So let's do a new aquarium. So we'll go to lighting, sky, continue. Connect sky to power, done. Connect power light output, done. Confirm the light is blue, check. I see the blue light. I uh, want to use Bluetooth, sure. Sure. Okay, so it found the sky. That was actually relatively quick. Quick and snappy, I like it. Uh, I guess there's no point to identify, we know what it is, but there we got it. So continue. Uh, I should see your sky turn on. Let's just say 8 a.m. for now, done. And right now that is, so we got Neptune sky profile, we got coral growth, we got photo mode, we got AB plus, SPS pH, middle highlight of 14, ATI blue, custom color. All right, so I am going to go with good old AB plus and set similar to what I normally use. So done. Sunset, 9 p.m., sure. Moonlight on. 
Actually back in those settings you have moonlight always on, after hours, or seasonal. So that will be when the real moon's out, it'll be out. So a few different op options there. Now with the SPS AB+, um, the brightness is 25%. So let me recheck with the power meter because I want to see the difference. Okay, so right here, I'm going to say that's roughly a little lower mid-tank at 25%. I'm getting 95 par. If I bump it up to 50%, I'm getting 185 par. If I do it to 75%, I am getting 270 par. And if I bump it up to 100%, I'm getting 350 par. So that might give, if you guys don't have a par meter, hopefully that gives you a, roughly an idea of how, what you're gonna get directly under the light at roughly what percentages. So yeah, so 350 at 100%, and drop it down to 50%, and we're getting about 100, 180-ish. Done, so yeah, set up, finished setup. That was pretty easy. Okay, now looking at the app, we can kind of see our sunrise to sunset, and Let's try going to custom color. So with this current preset, we have 100% in the purples, UVs. We got 59% in the blues. Now let's try dragging this up and just put everything on full and see what it looks like. All right, so we do have everything on full. Um, it does look good. It's a very crispy white. We still have some nice color rendition, so that's nice to see. And so this would basically be the light at its max power. And par-wise, roughly in that same spot, we're getting around 540 par. So yeah, definitely a ton of power if you need it. Initial thoughts. So this isn't my light. I borrowed off my buddy Matt. Thank you, sir. And he kind of let me play with it and get a good look, do a bit of an unboxing and get a good feel for it before he installs it on his tank. And initial thoughts. I was pleasantly surprised with the spectrum right out of the box. It was very aesthetically pleasing and had good par numbers. So that's been awesome. Uh, through the app, super easy to set it up. Um, if you have an Apex and you want Bluetooth, you have to create a new tank. If you're trying to add to an existing tank, then it expects you to plug it into the Aquabus port. So something to keep in mind. Um, it is surprisingly light. I expected it to be heavier than this, which is kind of a plus for mounting. Uh, the only slight con with that would mean because it's light, there's less cooling, which means it uses active cooling as the fans. That being said, it is actually fairly quiet. If you are listening top down, you hear the fans a lot more. From the side, they're way quieter. And if you look at kind of the baffle design, it doesn't shoot air out the sides, it pushes out the bottom. So in theory, you'd be pushing the air down towards your water surface, which could help in evaporative cooling on the tank. So depends how you look at it. Now, overall, it's a pretty nice light. Um, with the control for it, I originally felt that I would be limited by not having as much control of every channel on it. Um, that being said, the spectrums that I did offer from the channel blending did look good, so I was pretty happy with that aspect of it. And I know a lot of people don't want to tinker like crazy and they just want to, you know, have your couple sliders and get it to work. So there's a lot of people like that mentality. They're not as hardcore crazy wanting to tweak everything. And I think it's a very good fit for that. And coverage wise, if I was putting this on a tank, I would probably want one for every two, two and a half feet is kind of how I would space them out personally. So hopefully it gives you guys a bit of a good idea on how many I would throw on a tank or how many, you know, you likely would want to. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about is the mounting holes. They do have the same mounting pattern as the Radeon XR30. So if you do have that bracket, you could use a similar mounting technology. All right, guys, that basically sums it up for now. Um, thanks again, Matt, for letting me borrow your light and play with it the last week or so. If you guys have any other questions on it that I didn't answer, let me know, and I'll see if we can find you an answer in the comments below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed it, as always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.